on South Africa as a violent society or a violent country. We appear to be a nation who's at war with ourselves, whether it prevails in the boardroom, at learning institutions, at home, on social media. The reality is that it is up to each and every one of us to contribute to making South Africa the friendly and harmonious country that all the great liberators believed it could be. Uh, does it sound like a pipe dream or can it be a reality? Well, let's speak to our guests. We'll find out uh, from a business against crime. We've got the CEO, Simi Pile van Gran, with us this morning. So nice to have you. Thank you. Welcome to Morning Live. Uh, also joining us on the program is Vitz Social Media Lecturer, Dinesh Balia. Dinesh, nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Welcome again. to the program. And Brothers for Life Ambassador, the Reverend Bafana Kumalo. Nice, Bafana. Nice to see you, Bafana. It's a pleasure Thank you to so be much. Here. Welcome to all of you. Um, we've, we've really had quite a, a, a fast-paced conversation in the last two hours trying to get to the bottom of this violent society that we find ourselves in as South Africans. And so many people have been sending in some tweets. Perhaps we can look at them because we haven't had a chance to see what South Africans are saying about this topic. So uh, let's put, uh, if we can, one or two tweets up on the screen and get an understanding of what some of the South Africans out there are feeling about uh, this being a violent society. Uh, one of the tweets that I actually read a bit earlier was saying that it's in our blood that Africans are violent. I want to talk about that. Yeah, I'll see your face, Bafana. I want your response after that. Uh, Tox saying people have lost what we call uh, humanity, Ubuntu. And a high rate of drug abuse may also be a cause of violence. Yeah, we haven't touched on the drug abuse issue at all. Nice point bringing up. Uh, celebrating SA men, uh, we need to look at the root causes and address such, including values and ethics-driven leadership across all spheres. Thanks very much for writing into us. That's a, it's a, it's a good point as well. Uh, Robert writing and saying a dialogue is very necessary regarding the statues because it may not, or it may be not about only them. Uh, what's next? Uh, you're so right. I mean, this is not just about a statue. There's so much more to it. David Duplessis, racial violence will only stop when our government stops embracing apartheid policies. Okay, David, we'll have to elaborate a little bit more on that. And then finally, just another one from Celebrating SA Men. We remain a violent nation due to fatherlessness. Uh, the family institution is seriously under threat. It's a ticking time bomb. I think it's a nice starting point because that's where we ended off our conversation with our previous guests. And that was about that, the home and what happens inside the home. We're seeing tweets about a fatherless home, lack of leadership. What are your views on this? Well, from Business Against Crime's perspective, we are great advocates about leadership in the home and at schools because that is where it all starts. And we found that through the years when you're addressing crime, it's often too late to, to put in corrective measures because once adults get into bad habits or it becomes a way of life to commit crime because it's easier to do that, yeah. it becomes very difficult to change the mindset of an adult. Whereas with children who are innocent, um, who are waiting for adults to influence their mindsets, to influence their thought processes. We have that opportunity. And yes, we firmly believe that that is where hope lies for us as a country, yeah. in changing the type of leaders that we have going forward. Indeed, it's, it's, it's that route. And I know we're going to talk about business now, but I mean, you look at a business, a business is led by an individual who has Absolutely. a home. Absolutely. Uh, and and that, it, it's at the root and the foundation of everything. But what I think is, is so important, and I think we need to discuss this and, and quite in, in, intently, um, Bafana, is, is the role of man in society. Yes. We keep talking about fatherlessness. We keep, we keep talking about uh, the battered male, the mm. battered South African mm. male. Mm. What are your views on this? Well, I think some of the tweets were already beginning to give us some pointers as to what are the possible options that we need to reinforce. I mean, uh, the South African men's export tweet for me is very critical. How do we look at issues of values? How do we look at the norms that define our society? What are the things that um, uh, we use to, to transmit socialization to our children at, uh, in the home? Um, the notion of Ubuntu, as we all know, is not just about myself, it's about community. Mm. And that we have lost. How do we recover that? I think we can recover that. The issue of fa fatherlessness um, is foreign to African uh, society because remember when we grew up, we had a phrase that every child is my child. You know, the fact that you don't have a biological father did not mean you would not have um, a, a father figure in your, in your life. We have uncles, we have 
men in the community that we live with. The point is at how do we mobilize these resources that are there in our community to provide support to young people that are growing up. Mm -hmm. We know that, of course, young, young people who grow up in an environment family will themselves become violent because they learn that from the home situation. So we need if you like, um, a comprehensive intervention that looks at prevention, yes, in terms of the young people, but also how do we talk to older people to behave much better in the home so that you don't continue this cycle of a violence uh, in the house, which then plays itself out in kids in school, in the community, and when they grow up, they, al they also become violent. Yeah. So we have a lot of work to do in terms of prevention. I think a lot of our interventions at the moment look at how do we strengthen the criminal justice system, how do we increase jail time, how do we, which are important interventions, but I think they are not, for me, the ultimate. We know our jails are full. Yeah. You know, to put more people in jail where they, they, they come out worse than when they went in actually exacerbates the problem. So we need to look at prevention methods, how do we get into schools, how to work with young people out of school, so that we deal with issues of drugs. Who are the people that are peddling drugs in our community? Yeah. Some of them are, are celebrated by us. We see them as very successful people who have never worked in their lifetime, but they are driving expensive cars. So who are the role models that are actually providing guidance to young people? People see these guys with cars and think, oh, I can live I easy. I can do the same you know? thing. It's so and easy. therefore we, we, we continue and perpetuate this culture. Yeah, that was one of the big topics that came out in the previous hours was yep. the fact that we lack good role models in the society. We lack people to look up to and say, I want to be just like them. Yes. And that is a big problem. I mean, instead you're surrounded by the issue of perhaps gangsterism within townships, within yep. these neighborhoods where drugs are being sold, um, cars, stealing, yep. hijacking. It is a life of crime looks so easy and looks so glamorous. Yes. So I'm going to follow in and those people footsteps. people glorify that. Yeah. You know? uh, so we need interventions where you can show it's not cool to do those things. There are positive role models that you can find in every community which is a man that is uh, looking well after himself, looks well after his health, which is why Brothers for Life focuses not just on the community, it focuses on the, on the person. That's why we say Brothers for Life because the, the, the tagline says, do the right thing. The yeah. focus is on me as an individual to do the right thing right from where I am so that I can have a positive influence into society. Yeah. But it has to start with me. Let's, let's move on to um, the issue of ambivalence towards the law. Do you think that there is an ambivalence towards the law here in South Africa? There is absolutely, um, I think, a lack of value attached to the law in our country. And I think that's part of our history. I think that comes from when we were fighting against apartheid, mm. when we were struggling because there was a law that did not represent and protect all people in this country and people had to agitate against that. Unfortunately, we haven't moved past that. We haven't reinvented and redefined um, the way in which we embrace the law and consider it sacred in our country. And so I think it's something that generationally may change, but at the moment we're still dealing with a generation that is used to using struggle and in some instances violence um, to negotiate its individuality relative to the law. Yeah, but, but let's look deeper into it because it's not even, uh, it's as easy as paying your way out of a bribe, mm. uh, I mean, bribing your way out of a fine, yep. or, or just, you know, just a, 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 as Giving a person maybe... Giving an coffee or tea. Exactly. Great. Or you doing know. something like that. And, and again, we go back to um, perhaps they being in cahoots with, with some of the law, yep. law enforcement officers yep. and the lack mm. of respect is there. Yes. So you feel you can get away with it. It actually doesn't matter because yep. we're not really being policed. Yes. Is that a problem? Uh, it, surely this is posing a massive problem. If there, if there are no repercussions, Cushions, I'm going to do it. What's yes, the problem? Yes. But it's a two-way street. Yeah. Um, somebody's taking that bribe. Mm. Somebody's accepting it. Somebody's mm. making it possible for that to happen. Yeah. Um, if we have, you know, what we need to realize is a multifold problem. It's not an individual problem as in I offer the bribe and therefore it's going to happen. Mm. Someone has to accept it. Mm. Our police force doesn't feel empowered enough. Our uh, teachers don't feel empowered enough in schools, for example. You saw an instance in India, for example, where parents were helping kids to cheat 
Why are they doing that? Because society puts such pressure on them. So yeah. there are multiple issues that are feeding into this. Mm. And I don't think it's as simplistic as saying the individual offers a bribe and they think it's easy. I think that comes from various aspects, from the, the values and morals in the home. Mm. It comes from what we see in terms of our teachers, in Absolutely. terms of our peers and so on. Well, I mean, you talk about India. I mean, look at the case of when there was a rape in that country. Yeah. There was an outcry second to none. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. there Doesn't is an individual stop. raped Doesn't every stop. couple yeah. of minutes here. Yeah. You don't even report on it. Mm. And that's yeah. a problem. I'm going to stop for just a few minutes to get the news headline bullets. And before I do that, I have to say bless you. Because you just sneezed. You see, that's, re that's where we start, right? Yes. We start showing everyone so respect. Teddy, thank you. We bless everyone around us. Okay, Reverend, there you go. Let's, let's quickly get some news headlines. Ayanda standing by with the latest news. Ayanda?